Hello and welcome to Board Game Bongos. I'm Jay Sears and today we're going to talk about 10 ways to protect your board games. Now, we're going to do a bit of a series with a few things like this, like 10 accessory ideas and uh, 10 storage ideas as well, which we'll obviously leave links in the description down below when we do those videos. But before we get on to this list, please do consider subscribing to the channel so you can see more content like this. And yes, that's particularly for those who keep clicking on the videos and haven't quite subscribed yet. Oh, just hit that subscribe button so you can see more content like this. And please like our videos as well because that lets others know about what we're doing and get involved as well. Let us know in the comments down below. Is there anything we've missed off the list? Perhaps you've got some ideas as well. Without that way, let's get started to a list of our 10 ways to protect your board games. So starting off with number one. This might be a bit obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people do this, perhaps because of some storage issues. And that is keep your board games off the floor, particularly with cold places and particularly with hard flooring because there is a risk of moisture gathering. Now, I'm not saying that the houses are all cold and damp, but there is a potential issue as heat rises. However, the lower it is, the colder it is. So keep that in mind. It's got a good idea. Perhaps you've got some spare cardboard you can put underneath if you've got nowhere to store those games, but try and find some storage ways we are going to cover this in a bit more detail and um 10 storage solutions but obviously we're discussing about protecting your board games and particularly if they're on the floor in an attic or a cupboard space you want to try and get them off the floor because there's a potential issue of moisture being soaked up by the, the card itself which will eventually start to destroy and eat away at your board games you want to try and protect them as best you can if you've got some storage space or some shelves try and find ways to get those games off the floor. And if they have to stay on the floor, well, put them in a cardboard box or put something underneath to prevent the risk of moisture being soaked up. So let's move on to number two, and that is avoid storing board games in direct sunlight. And understand that everyone has the privilege of being able to move the room around. Perhaps you're in a small flat or a small room where the board games are stored. There are a few other solutions here. If there is sunlight coming in and directly shining onto your board games, what will happen is the UV light will attack the games and it will fade away. So what will happen is the game will fade away, the colour will fade away on the boxes and eventually that will damage it over time. And what you'll find is that it will look quite ugly uh, with the rest of your board games. <laughs> You've got a faded looking cover. So trying to avoid putting them into direct sunlight. And the way around that is perhaps you've got blinds you can put up, perhaps you've got uh, kind of cotton cover you can put in the windows. There's all different types of solutions and perhaps you can look at moving your shelves around or bookcases or calyx shelves in different areas of the room. So try and avoid having direct sunlight beaming onto your board games so you can try and preserve them as long as possible. You don't want them fading away. It look, won't look that pretty on the shelves so try and avoid that where possible. Our third I was going to say that again. Our third way of protecting your board games is silicone gel packs. And that's more for your games that aren't used that often. And you can buy silicone gel packs relatively cheap, big packs, one kilogram packs, for example, and only for a few pounds. And you put those uh, silicone gel packs inside your board games, perhaps have been sitting in a cupboard for months, perhaps you don't use them that often, perhaps only come out once a year at Christmas time or, or for Halloween, etc. Well, use gel packs because that will soak up moisture that gets into your board games. And although it won't avoid all moisture, it will help and to avoid mold gathering. But Bear in mind, it really depends on your room temperature as well. If you've got an extremely damp, wet room, you're storing your board games in, which I highly recommend against, then obviously that gel pack is not going to be as effective. So really, is gel packs only work ever so slightly to get those excess moisture soaked up. And you're recommended to replace them every so often, uh, perhaps once a year, you swap them out with new gel packs or every six months. But gel packs will help and you have different types of them, but you can get pick, pick them up for relatively cheap and they certainly will do a relatively decent job at soaking up some of that moisture for those unused board games. So let's move on to the next one, number four, and this is room temperature. Might be a bit obvious, storing games in extremely hot environments or extremely cold environments will 
damage your games over time. So I'm going to give you some statistics here for you nerds who are geeks who love these statistics. And according to the British Library's Preservation Advisory Centre, it recommends that archi archival materials be kept between 13 to 20 degrees Celsius and 35 to 60 percent relative humidity. Now, the common solution is to buy a dehumidifier, but of course the, the upfront cost is expensive and the ongoing running costs are quite high given the rise in energy costs. But so there's an alternative um, which is a little bit more environmental friendly and that is damp red. So you can get some damp red uh, boxes where you can place onto your shelves or close to your board games and that will soak up a lot of the moisture. It is similar to the gel packs we explained earlier and you can relatively pick them up for around six to 10 pounds, they're quite cheap. It won't work as well as dehumidifiers. However, it will do a decent job in soaking up some of that moisture that's in the air. Perhaps if you're someone who dries clothes indoors, we don't all have the luxury of gardens, then it will help soak up some of that moisture in the air. And it's a lot, lot cheaper long term than using a dehumidifier. It might not be as great, but they still work relatively well and it's worth considering that. So on to our next one. And that is number five, which is inserts. Now, inserts are great for keeping things organized, but they can also protect your tokens and your board pieces because it prevents them from moving around, particularly if you're someone who relative, uh, takes games off the shelves quite often, goes to conventions, moves the boxes around. It's going to stop them moving around a lot and will keep them um, in their own little spaces and areas within that insert and will protect them a lot longer, so it will prevent them getting chipped um, and worn off over time. So inserts can be quite pricey, but it helps to organize your games and to protect those pieces as well. So it's worth considering that and you can also make your own inserts. So let's move on to our next one, number six, and that is dice trays and token holders. They are great. If you can afford an insert, you can buy these token trays or, or little containers where you can place tokens in, which is substantially cheaper than an insert. It might not look as pretty or be as well organized, but certainly it will help protect those chips. And when you've got a board game night, using uh, the different types of token trays will help as well. Instead of just sprawling out the tokens and people rumbling about for them on the table, it will prevent them getting chipped and worn off over time if you use some trays. Now, I like to use these ones in particular. They're really compact, and as you can see, they're small enough. They can hold a decent amount of the different sizes, and they're great for giving out to your different players. Perhaps each player has their own starting types of tokens and pieces that they start the game with, and it's really good and handy to have those. And it, it kind of avoids people playing around and moving them about and putting them in own little piles. But over time, that will wear away, so it avoids any of that. So it's certainly worth investing in some kind of token trays or perhaps little containers that you can place into your boxes. The next one, number seven, we're going to talk about card holders. Now, card holders are great for a couple of reasons. One, particularly if for young players where they might struggle to hold a lot of cards, it's great for that. You have single card holders and you have card holders that hold multiple cards at once. They're also great as well, perhaps if you've got a game that you have to hold lots of cards. For example, Greedy Kingdoms, you have nine cards. That's quite a lot for people to hold. Well, card holders do a great job and they help with that. But the further important thing here is that it prevents those con constant use of the cards and mucky paws going onto them. Now, of course, we're coming to the next one. Um, you can use card sleeves, but this is more about one protecting that constant touching of the cards and which will prevent the wearness over them because perhaps you're someone who doesn't want to use card sleeves and likes that feel, particular nylon feel of cards and it'll help protect them if you've got uh, card holders because you're not touching the cards consistently. So you, over time, what you'll find is if you haven't got a card holder, people are holding the cards in their hands. You're constantly touching them. Whereas I'm using a card holder, I'm not constantly touching them. So that wear and tear will reduce significantly. But it also helps you keep the cards organized. I highly recommend them. We've got some here. We use them every so often and they do help. So let's now move on to our next one. And that links in nicely to card holding on number eight, which is snacking. Now, obviously, some people bring snacks to games and that's perfectly fine. But if somebody's bringing some cheesy crisps or perhaps that residue is left on your fingers and they're touching your cards and your game pieces, that will wreck your game over time. Now, naturally, 
perhaps you don't want to be bringing those people to your game nights, but politely, you perhaps want to be asking them to bring snacks. is isn't going to leave a lot of residue on your fingers. And it's about respecting other people's bits and pieces. More about this is more of an etiquette and what should be respectful when playing games with others. But consider the snacks that you're bringing into your game night. Perhaps maybe stick to something like crackers or of a similar type. Um, bringing in, you know, big pizzas and main meals when you're playing games, food gets everywhere and eventually it will get onto your game PCs. So consider whether you should be perhaps having a meal before you play a game um, and consider what snacks you're bringing to your game night. Right, let's move on to our next one, number nine, that was card sleeves, what we mentioned earlier. You have different types of card sleeves and you can get various different amounts. I like that Kienda in particular gives you a mat when you purchase the board game from them. And you can actually put that card up to the mat and it will show you exactly what type of card sleeve you need. I really like that. And card sleeves are really good at protecting your cards from being nicked at the end and from wearing away through constant use, particularly for deck building games. So if you've got deck building games in your collection, consider sleeving them. They will preserve the cards and they will last a lot longer and will certainly reduce the wear and tear on cards using card sleeves. You can get card sleeves relatively cheap if you buy them in bulk, but they can be pricey over time. Now, some games don't warrant purchasing card sleeves because that outweighs the cost of the game. Dominion, for example, it's a relatively cheap game, about £30. Why would I spend another £20 on card sleeves when I could just replace the game for £30 and I could quite easily get about 50 plays out of the game before I need to even consider replacing it? So it's worth considering card sleeves, whether you need that for your deck building game or not. But I do recommend them for certain deck building games you're consistently shoveling and touching the cards. So let's now move on to our last one, number 10, and that is ways to protect your game pieces and your board and perhaps your, your box as well. And that is Board Game Shield. Now, there are two different products that they give for Board Game Shield. You've got one that protects from spills and you've got another that protects through the UV light and bacteria and viruses. So I'm going to explain and just briefly go through what this is and what it means in context. So Board Game Shield is a universal tabletop game upgrade that will probably proof your game now. So Board Game Shield creates an invisible moisture repellent shield on your game surface that prevents accidents from severely damaging your game collection. So this works brilliantly well and it's a, an acrylic type of um, material, so it's a, a fluid. Now it doesn't ruin or wreck your games, I want to be clear with that, but if you were to purchase other types of acrylics, there is a risk it will discolor because some acrylics interact with different colors in different ways. But Bogum Shield is 100% safe, it works extremely well, and you get around 20 games on average um, to be covered with one uh, box, well it's not a box, it's kind of uh, in, a, in a tube if you like, uh, that will work for about 20 games and it costs around about 20 to 30, I can't remember the exact price, but that certainly works well. It protects your games from spells, it does a great job, it does take a little bit of time to cover all your boards and your pieces etc and your tokens, but it will protect them, it's certainly worth considering, particularly for those games that you have hold high in value, perhaps, perhaps you've got some games that are vintage, perhaps you've got some games that are not replaceable, but you want to consider Bone Game Shield that will certainly protect your game, or perhaps you've got party games that get constant use, uh, people have, have got drinks and food around, well, consider Bone Game Shield, it will protect your games, and it's fantastic, a little bit pricey, but it is safe and 100% works. So that brings us to the end. I hope you found this useful. So be sure to check out our other useful videos on content like this. For example, our 10, 10 suggested accessories. So if you enjoy videos like this and want to know more content, please consider subscribing to the channel and consider liking the video as well. The more likes we get, the more likely this will show up in other people's feeds so we can help and educate other people on what would be great accessories and ways to protect your board games. We hope you've enjoyed this. My name is Beaton J. Sears. Thanks so much for watching Board Game Bonkers. Until next time, take care.